Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of After the Devs where I and a fellow content creator break down what we've recently seen in, well, what was yesterday's Coffee Stain Studio Devs live stream. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. So today I'm welcoming Brain DG to the series. Now, for those of you who were with us on Saturday for the Satisfactory Tips event, you will already know who Brain DG is. But for those of you out there who don't, um, Brain DG, why don't you uh, give us a little rundown as to what you do? Hello. Well, thank you, Total Eclipse, for having me today. Yep, my name is Brain DG. Most people call me Barry, and you'll find me on Twitch. Uh, where I stream on a Tuesday and a Thursday. Uh, recently, I've started doing community events, uh, hosting a uh, game called Brains Build Battle uh, on a Thursday night. So you're more than welcome to pop along. Um, I do some tutorials, uh, mostly surrounding Area Actions mod, and uh, I've started helping Total here with the Satisfactory Tips website. Perfect, thank you. Um, so. As you guys already know, we're actually going to be going over what was said in the live stream for the Coffee Stains developer, Coffee Stain Community Devs live stream, which was on the 10th, so yesterday now. And we're going to cover everything they talked about. That's the state of development. Uh, they spoke a little bit about merchandise. Uh, also, a question and answers section as well as we will touch very quickly on the community highlights as well and then we'll go on to talk a little bit about our recent event for satisfactory tips and then go on to talk about other community events so starting off with the state of development what's happened recently so we're hearing that they've been working on the multiplayer fixes for dedicated servers, and I, for one, cannot wait for them to come out. Really going to help us with our events at satisfactorytips.com. And I hear they're also working on some fixes to the conveyor belt system and how that works um, rendering um, and removing some of the glitches that we've been seeing in multiplayer. Um, I don't think the network performance related, but it's more fine tuning. Yep, so that particular update, from what I understand, is just covering the conveyor belts and, like you said, some glitches, some sync issues. After that, they're going to be talking, uh, moving on to the experimental builds uh, next big update, which is for Unreal Engine 4.25, which is going to bring a whole lot um, more optimizations to the game, but we can expect that to be inexperimental for a while with lots of bugs. It's very experimental by their uh, taking their words from their own mouths. After that, there's also the modular build followed by something special they mentioned um, coming just before Christmas um, prior to U4. Now, do you, do you have any idea of what this special thing before Christmas could be? Well, other than Santa going past with reindeers or some snow, I'm really hoping that we're going to see some Christmas trees dotted around the map. <laughs> what about you, Toto? I'd love to see that. Or may maybe they could get the, the little um, personal containers and make them um, like little presents, like wrapped <gasps> presents. <laughs> yeah, that would be a really good idea. Uh, the reason Maybe that... some goodies. <laughs> You never know, a little little present for us. But we have no idea really. They, they're keeping it very close to the chest. I like to think it's dedicated service. That would be a fantastic present oh, for a, a lot of definitely. us. And then after this mini little Christmas update, we do have update 4.0, which will probably be coming in the early months after, well, in the new year. Um, following that, they have mentioned that they may be giving us some sneak previews as to update 4.0 as well, which might be quite fun. I, they don't know in what way they're going to be showing that to us, but we can expect that um, hopefully within the next couple of months. 
And then after that, they uh, talked a little bit about the recent video with Ben from Coffee Stain Studios, highlighting some of the things that are actually coming to the game. So that's things like fluid mechanics. Um, what are your thoughts on that? So yeah, I mean, the fluid mechanics look amazing. Uh, the way the water looks, the way it's now able to drag not only people, but animals down with the flow of the water looks phenomenal. And it's going to add a real dynamic to the game, I think. I'm looking forward to seeing how that works. Definitely. I'm really looking forward to making like mini traps for the animals. <laughs> of <course> you would. <laughs> Creative ways to get rid of fluffy tail hogs. <laughs> uh, and the other thing that they were mentioning was optimizing through maths as well, so that we can reduce, uh, say, for example, object count which means that we'll be able to add more items into the game to lag it even more. Um, one last thing that I should also mention, for those of you who don't realize, the fluid update has now gone from experimental to early access. That was the big update um, to early access that you will have had to have downloaded uh, if you were in the game today. Now, they then went on to talk about the merchandise. Um, so in regards to that, they uh, gave us a nice little sneak preview of something, didn't they? Of the doggo pin, indeed. And it looks absolutely amazing. I just hope that it will also be available in Europe at some point soon. Yeah, well, <laughs> talking about that, I've got a poster that is arriving. It's already been sent. And had I realized that there were these little doggo pins coming, I might have tried to have killed two birds with one stone. But, oh, well, I'm just going to have to wait now uh, for the oh. update to the European, well, European store. Fingers crossed. Which they started talking about, saying they're going to work on, I think, as of sort of today onwards or tomorrow onwards. So this week they're starting to, to work on a European store. So I'm looking forward to be able to get perhaps a poster you're getting your hands on, but definitely getting one of the hoodies. Oh, definitely. I could. I you. You'll only ever see me wear one of like three or four different hoodies of my streams, and I'm very conscious of it. I need to like get my hands on some of that merch so that I just don't look like I have no clothes. It's just as very long as you don't cold end up here. wearing the same hoodie day in day out every day. <laughs> I'm gonna be really <laughs> self conscious now, at, like making sure that I'm chain like rotating my hoodies every day. Put it on the calendar. <laughs> This is a red day, <laughs> a blue day. Um, after that, we went on to talk. They went on to talk about the community highlights. So we have a a load of community highlights each week. I highly recommend checking out the VOD and seeing what they talk about. I will put a link below that. But they did actually spotlight the one and only Brain DG, who's with us today. So, Indeed. what did you think of that? Well, I was taken a bit back, actually. I, I wasn't expecting that. And I just want to thank Snoot and Jace for, for doing such a thing. Um, but I think ultimately, you know, we were highlighting what happened at the weekend, yeah, the Satisfactory Tips event. And that in itself was an incredible day. Um, and I thoroughly enjoyed hosting with my co-host here, Total Eclipse, the entire event. And I hope you know, moving forward to see you guys pop along and take part as well. Well, that's too kind of you to rope me in on it. But all of that beautiful mess was uh, all you're doing. <laughs> um, well, but no, you, you put in a huge amount of work and especially highlighting your community events on a, a Thursday, which we'll talk about later anyway. Um, you really do do like some amazing stuff for the community. And I highly recommend those of you who are watching this to actually check him out on a Thursday. But again, we'll be talking about that later. Uh, the next thing that they went on to after this were questions and answers from the community. So the first question that was thrown at them was support for Linux and Mac. And they've said that they're not concentrating on this at the moment. They're, they're concentrating on the PC um, as a platform. However, you can um, play the game through Proton on Steam, and I think it's Wine on Epic at the moment. It is possible you can do that, um, but after the, the game is out fully on PC, then they'll probably look into that a little more. 
Um, after that, they went on to talk about dedicated servers. Again, the question was whether coffee stains were going to host them or whether we'd have to, to get them ourselves. Well, I've already stated that I'm hoping to get a handful of servers for, for the community. But they did also mention that third party hosts may, may, may sell that option to us and make it available. And then they also gave us a little piece of information, which they hadn't mentioned before, um, that there may be an opportunity for, for Coffee Stains to actually provide some service. But they didn't talk on that. They said it's not definitely happening, but they did kind of hint at that. So I'll be interested to see in what capacity that could be. They then moved on to a question which was about frame loss. So if you were building, whether it was better to build um, horizontally, spread it over a wider space, your factory, or whether to build it all within a single vertical build. And the devs mentioned, and I can confirm this from my own experience, that because you're trying to render everything in a small space, generally speaking, it's better to build horizontally and spreading it out rather than one um, vertical build like the five by five that we have. So does that mean we might have a new five by five meta of multiple five by fives? Oh, well, you never know. I mean, we are actually having a meeting this um, Sunday with other people who are doing the five by five to talk okay. about an official rule set <laughs> because there has been talk about that. So who knows? Maybe it will be multiple five by five towers. Um, after that, they went on to talk about uh, crashes and the effect that it has on the company. Uh, they particularly, the majority of crashes that they're, they're having to work through at the moment, they find out are caused by mods. So often people don't mention that when they submit these bug reports or crash reports. So if you do end up going onto the Q&A site and mentioning that there's a crash, if you're using mods, do mention it in that post because it's just taking a lot of time for them to to sort through that when it's something that they can't actually resolve. And I have actually seen within the last week or so an, an increase in crashes. Uh, and I've got a few mods installed, so I don't know if there's a, a link there somehow. But yeah, mm -hmm. make sure you don't overwhelm our dear uh, developers with too many crash reports, especially around mods. Yeah, certainly. The, the more they, time they can spend working on the game rather than trying to fix something that they can't actually fix because it's nothing to do with them, the better. The sooner we get 1.0. <laughs> yeah. uh, they then, um, I've put all the rest of the questions that were more in-game related as a separate section, so we'll go on to that now. Um, the first thing that they were talking about was story mode. So they mentioned that First of all, that if you complete story mode, the chances are that you will be able to continue playing the game afterwards. It's not just going to stop you from playing it. And they also mentioned that if you did want to do story mode, it would be probably better having us already having access to the game. That it would be better to start the game again because it might spoil it for us. Um, having mega factories already built and being able to produce everything we need. They then also mentioned about new tiers. So I don't know if you know about this brain, but they've already mentioned pri well, obviously we have tier eight available to mm -hmm. us currently with nothing in it. But in the last couple of weeks, they also mentioned once or twice that there'd be a tier nine. And so Exciting. Unofficially, it's now officially like been mentioned that there will be another tier, at least. I really hope they round it up to ten tiers because you think they might. I hope. I hope so. I hope so. It, it just annoys me. I like whole numbers, so if they leave it at nine, I shouldn't say anything because they'll do the the whole scanner trolling on me now. They'll be like, "There's only nine tiers." <laughs> exactly. Um, they also mentioned that there's going to be some changes to the power system. They didn't specify anything. They just said there's going to be a change, which is something that I've been wanting for a long time. 
um, and I've mentioned it a few times, but we have no idea as to what. And one thing that I heard about that I'm quite excited for is that they're potentially adding something to make circles in the vanilla build. And I am, I can't wait. I love building things with circles, making my towers. So interested to see what they're going to bring here. Yeah, um, it, I'm, I'm quite interested in that myself. I do quite a lot of circle builds. In fact, we joke that synonymous with, with my, my channel is having a circle build in it. Mm -hmm. um, and they mentioned that the problem at the moment is it's very, um, again, very expensive to run circles because you're putting foundations on top of one another. So it might be that they look at having this, a, a new way of doing this eventually in game, which I'm certainly down for. Definitely. Speaking of new things, potentially, uh, they went on to talk about the Mark VI um, conveyor belts and they said at the moment there is a technical complication with them in game so at the moment it doesn't look like we're going to have them there's something to do with the the maths and being able to calculate all the items on a really fast moving um, belt so we may we may not see that at, at a later date and other things that they mentioned is that they are probably going to be towards the release of 1.0, adding a lot more decor to the game. So what are this your thoughts on that? You oh, want I'm it? I'm really excited. Yeah, no, definitely. I'm, you know, I've, I've reached my limit now of being able to uh, be creative within my, my world and I'm looking for new opportunities. So I'm, I'm really hoping we're going to get some more things. I can't really think of things I'm specifically wanting, but I'm definitely looking for things like half walls, for example. Um, I'd love to see maybe some kind of triangular foundations coming in. Um, but definitely, like with the, the new technology, technically not new technology, but the technology they're using to build the ladders, I'm hoping mm -hmm. we're going to see that used for building the walls and using that to put foundations down. Um, so that's something I'm hoping to come, um, although that's not really decor. Uh, but the other thing potentially is the way the uh, pipeline wall holes work to mm -hmm. be functional for belts as well, so that we can just start placing our, our holes for belts. Um, anywhere within in, within the wall and stop us having all these spare holes everywhere in our factory, which just drives me mad. Oh, you see, at the moment, I'm using, like, I place the the conveyors on, like, the side of a, a double, and then yeah. I swap it. I, I delete it and put a doorway down at the moment because it drives oh, me cheeky. mad having yeah. that, like, hole there. Kind of yeah, works, a yeah. little bit of a cheat. Yeah. But certainly, a lot of those quality of life um, like updates I'd love to have, like you were mentioning the, the drag and drop um, approach to yeah. walls or foundations. I actually covered a video on it. Really nice segue. Thank you very much, Brain DG. Definitely wasn't planned. Actually, it wasn't planned. Um, but Monday's video was based on a mod that allows you to do that. So check it out if you don't want to be clicking all the time. Um, but yes, yeah, certainly some more custom, um, like, customizable options. I can't think off the top of my head um, what, but I think we really do need that as a community because this game gives us so much freedom to um, like artistic license with our factories. We need to be able to express that. <laughs> we need oh, exactly. more customization options. But a couple I'm... of things have just popped into my head. Oh, so yeah. I'm thinking also the, uh, the ability to put pipes through foundations and belts through foundations um, in the floor. So I'd love that. Things, yeah, horizontally. Um, and obviously, I think everybody is desperate for ramped fences. Yes, I, I need them. There's nothing yeah. worse than having like neat fences around your whole build coming up to a ramp and there's nothing there. <laughs> nothing there. I'm just like, yeah. oh, not again. Um, but certainly, like that's one of the... the things that I'm I most want in game is more customization options. So that's pretty much everything they covered in yesterday's live stream and now we're going to go on and actually just give a bit of a rundown about the satisfactorytips.com uh, live event that we had on Saturday, November the 7th just passed. But for that I'm going to leave Brain DG, our community event manager in charge. So uh, please Take it away. Thank you very much, Toto. Indeed, the weekend 
just past had our very first community event on the satisfactorytips.com and what an event it was. I can't thank you all enough for attending, um, interacting, and the support was overwhelming. So thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to running more events with you guys involved. So just a bit more about what happened at the weekend for those that may have missed it. We had a number of community games. We had some featured content, a screenshot uh, competition, and we also had a game giveaway. And starting at the top, we had the infamous by now Brains Build Battle, which was won by Frucci. Uh, and in second place, we had I Am Chicken. And then we had our first featured content, which was hosted by a content creator called Don't Poke Josh, called Pokes Pad Pre which was a, um, a time trial with a, an explorer where you had to get from, uh, weave your way through some of the bouncy pads. Quite a devious track, really. Um, and that was won by Kayleen. And in second place was Sam Weiris. Uh, following that, we had the Celebrity Build Battle, where we had contestants from CSS. So we had Jace, we had Snoo, we had Runestone Gaming, we had Sergeant Pepper, we had Yuri Makas, we had VSB Meza, and we had Sam Weiris. And of course, what would a build battle be without our very own Total Eclipse? The winner of that event wasn't one of our celebrity build battle contestants. No, it was somebody from chat because we put the winnings into chat and there Frucci walked away with the prize. Um, after that, we had the Samwarium Survival Struggle, which was another one of our featured content segments, uh, this time hosted by Sam Weiris, and it was like a, a PvP last man standing sort of PUBG style um, arena. Really good, well executed, looking forward to seeing that in the future. Uh, and that was won by Galactic, so congratulations there. So that finished off our games that we were playing. Um, at the end, we went through our screenshot competition. So with the week leading up to the event, we had four themes. Um, within the circle theme, we had um, Abo Mark uh, winning £10. We had The Calamity winning the bridge theme. We had Lollipop Jai winning the train station and uh, Germanis winning the gar garage workshop uh, theme. Now, during the event, we also had an additional poll to see who would win out of all of those. And Lollipop Jai walked away with another £10, so £20 for submitting one screenshot. So make sure you keep your eye out on Twitter for the next time we have our screenshot competition for the next event. And then for the big tip giveaway, which was for the Satisfactory game, we had Felix Rostrom walking away with the game, which was courtesy of Runestone gaming and that kind of sums up what happened the weekend just passed but i can confirm today that our next event will be coming to you live on december the 12th so keep an eye out on twitter and we'll see you there yep you're gonna have to keep your uh, date on the prize date on the prize your eye on the date <laughs> what are those oh, your two? money on the date your money on the date um, yeah, so we're going to be doing that on December the 12th, and I can already say I've already, I've already started preparing for it. I've already started the next game. I've got an idea as to what I want to do, and I'm very much looking forward to participating or hosting that once again with you. And we are going to potentially be doing some changes to the system. We, the this event that's just passed was probably more of a a test for us to a dry run for what we want to to do as a regular yeah. monthly event and i think we learned a huge amount from that a massive amount indeed. so we're just going to move forward from there and take all the best bits and improve on them and we're going to improve on the bits we weren't too keen on but i think other than my crash <laughs> uh, which happened at the start of my event other than yeah. that, everything pretty, went pretty smoothly on, on the whole, so we, we were very chuffed. So, um, other than our event coming on the 12th of December, uh, there are a few other events or community-driven things going on at the moment. First of all, 
Respawn Repeat is hosting a event on the 22nd of November, if I remember rightly. So if you do want to take part, do, me do message him over on Twitch. There's also a regular Twitch stream for me, for multiplayer, on a Saturday. And there's also a regular Twitch stream for Runestone Gaming on a Friday. And you host a regular um, event on Thursday as well, don't you? I do indeed. Every Thursday, 9pm, we have Brains Build Battle. There are prizes up for grabs. Eight spots available. Don't delay. Pop on in and have some fun. And I think, Total, you quite often pop in and uh, participate, don't you? I, I do. I, I love your build-offs. And the thing is, these build battles, you have to build a particular item that the audience gets to choose, so you never yeah. know what you're going to be building. We've done ridiculous things, like we've had to build a pirate ship or a guitar or a, a radio or a teddy bear. Like, it gets really, really creative, things. which yeah. I love. I a really good event. I definitely highly recommend you checking it out. So that's every Thursday, 9 p.m. GMT over on Twitch. Indeed. But apart from that, that's pretty much everything all we have time for in this this After the Devs episode. So I do have to say thank you so much, Brain DG, for joining us. I really do greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Appreciate You're welcome. It. And uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing some more of you soon. So that's all we have time for in today's episode. Now I do have to say thank you to BrainDG for joining me at pretty much last minute to help out. Uh, do check out his channel on Twitch and also if you enjoy playing around with area actions, do check out his guides over on YouTube. I'll place both the links below. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and obviously special thanks going to our patrons who allow me to do this. Most notably, our Solar Eclipse Patreons, The Calamity, Bo Papa, and Tommy Ostgard, as well as our Lunar Patreon, Matt Lippard, and not to mention our Blood Moon of the Day, Jimmy Rogers. Anyway, guys, until next time, ciao for now.